But oh, um, I've been watching these guys. I don't know. I don't want to exaggerate. It had to be at least a year. I've gone through, I think, your entire back catalog. And uh, um, what they do is they sail around the world. Uh, Riley had, I can't recall exactly, it was some fairly well-paying job that didn't spiritually pay off, if I have the story right. He flew over to maybe exactly the Mediterranean wrong. somewhere, maybe, or north of Australia, bought a boat, quickly met Alana, who goes by Elena, I think, and... Uh, <laughs> and uh, just call me Eli. <laughs> Eli? Oh, oh, I'll... Yeah. I'll mess that up too. <laughs> like, Just point to me. <laughs> <laughs> and he met her early on in his voyage, and they paired up. Um, they're they're a couple now, and they sail the seas. I, I don't. I, I know you've gone from over that you know, Asia Europe area to the, the Caribbean and South America. Um, where are you coming from? You told us just a minute ago. We're currently in Panama City. Panama City. Have you actually circumnavigated yet? No, no, no. We've only really crossed the Atlantic. We've got a couple of really big sails coming up. We're going to the Galapagos, which is a seven-day sail, and then we're going to hang out there for a while. I'm meeting my uh, my father's coming over, and then from there we've got a 30-day sail. So Freaking that's out. a big one across that the Pacific. Is a... Yeah, so like I – some people go out and they make circumnavigation like a goal. That doesn't seem to be your goal. Your goal seems to be going places you'd like to be and just being unshackled. More. That's a much better goal. It's not even impressive to circle the world anymore. Like it's, it's like 300 years ago maybe, but yeah. why not now? Just do whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's the that's their it's goal. They just do whatever the fuck yeah. they want. We, you guys came up in the show a week or two ago, like kind of organically. Like it, I, I forget. I mentioned that you catch your food with a spear gun and Taylor has this great line. He's like, yes, that's either for the very, very rich or the very, very poor. Like rarely, <laughs> <laughs> rarely do just regular yeah. people just go swimming Not with a the spear. Not a middle class hobby. No. Spear <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I know what you mean. It's sort of like either trophy hunting or desperately searching for food. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Riley will seriously be in the water for hours, and he's so disappointed when he doesn't have like when he doesn't come home with a fish. It's it's really upsetting. I, I, I have a question. Have Have you ever been uh, out of sea <clears throat> and drop something that's actually important in the water and lose it? Has that ever happened? Stuff uh, that costs you know around a hundred bucks. Never anything that's our life, you know. Uh, yeah. We nearly we we were dismantling a winch. My my cousin and I halfway across the Atlantic, and he sort of pulled it up. And all of the the, the okay. inside, all of the bits and pieces, the necessary gears just fell out all over the floor. <laughs> and we were desperately jumping and like trying to stop them from going overboard. Yeah. We managed so yeah, that been that would have been game over. I don't know what we would have done then, but managed to grab all the bits die. and pieces and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no, they weren't near shore. I, I know this. <laughs> we have eaten a liner. <laughs> I'm always really worried because, um, like, when we're doing big sails, like a week or two weeks, Riley will jump off the back of the boat and hold onto the rope while we're sailing, and that just really freaks me out. And I wish you wouldn't do it. So I think that's sort of the worst thing. All yeah. right, I'll I'll keep that in mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that does sound I'm dangerous. Always watching you. Yeah. So, uh, nah, uh, uh, Elena. I swear he calls you Alana, but Elena. Um, Elena. Yeah. yeah, he's Australian. He can call her whatever he wants to. <laughs> yeah, he can. <laughs> of course he can. Um, <laughs> so you made a decision to come on board, and you just knew him. You, you did like a short sale, and then decided to stay with him. That, because of the implication. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, not scary at all? I'll take this one. It was the moustache, Woody. It was the moustache. That's what she yeah. says. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen all your episodes. Yeah. It, it, that's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> like legit, like uh -huh. someone was interviewing her. I, I forget where I watched it, but and and she said, yeah, it was the moustache. It was irresistible. What can she do? Oh, well, I, I can't deny that. It was initially the moustache that I saw first. And he told me he had a boat and I didn't believe him. I was like... He was like, you know, I've got a boat at the marina. You and your friend should come back later. And I was like, yeah, all right. Nothing anyway, sus. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I, just, I just didn't think he had a yacht. I thought he was so young. And anyway, I went there a few days later during the day just to, you know, make sure this guy was all right before I jumped on his boat. And turns out what? he was all right. And I went for a little sail. 
That's what I want to say. The total vetting process before you hopped on and headed out to international waters with them. Like, a few days. Very upset. No. No, it it was longer than that. It was... So we met, and then I had to go back to work. And I had to go home and sell my van. So we knew each other for, like, probably two or a month or two months before we actually set sail. That's not as bad. That's way longer than it was in my head. My next question? I thought he literally picked her up at the dock, and she was like, I'll give it a go. And she was just, like, available to go sailing. They went, and, And then I know they went sailing for some... Like, they both had it in their head that, like, you know what, we're going to go someplace. It was a shorter trip. Like, I'll, I'll call it two weeks, but I could be wrong. And at the end of that, they made a decision to keep sailing together. Yeah, like, I just imagine right, a conversation right? with one of her friends where she's like, this is Riley. If I don't show up in six weeks, he's the guy who murdered me. Make sure you tell everyone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he's sort of smiling like, <laughs> right. tell me about the boat. Yeah, pretty much. Um, like, like um, how big is the boat? Like, what are its dimensions? And if you don't mind us asking, like, how much did it cost? Okay, so it's about, well, it's exactly 43 foot long, and it was about uh, 100 grand Australian, which these days is only about $1,200. 60, 60 bucks. <laughs> 12, yeah. 1200 US, yeah. No. <laughs> Here, I'll convert it, I'll get it. <clears throat> Do you say 100 grand yeah. Australian? Yeah, at the time. It was during the global financial crisis, and. Woody, you'll probably remember this. I, I bought it off three um, arguing Italians, so I, I picked it up for a bit of a song. I was yeah. pretty happy with the uh, the price that I paid in yeah. the You're end. living a movie, yeah. and that was just the opening scene where your character yeah. decided he was done working, saw a bunch of Italians haggling over a boat, and you were like, you know what, fuck it. I'm going to do this. <laughs> you find a girl across the world, and yeah. It was a great the curtains pop. went up, and, and that was the opening scene. For yeah, people that yeah. want to know, that's about 71 grand U.S., about uh, seventy one thousand. So an expensive US. boat, yeah. Yeah, is there it anywhere is. Anywhere on it that you can stand, like fully stand up while you're inside it. I, I I'm not familiar with the boat as well as Woody. Oh yeah, it's got um. Four cabins, two. It's bathrooms. got four, yeah, four cabins, two bathrooms. It's quite big, so you would say, yeah, it's an expensive boat, but a very, very cheap house. Yeah. They can stand. I bet they could can't okay. jump. I bet if they wanted to jump and hit their head on the roof, they could. If, if that gives you any vibe as to the. Maybe Riley could anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If, if they were I'm trying to. Jumper. Yeah. Um, and then <laughs> he says it has four cabins, but I want to say a lot of times they're filled with clothes and stuff. Like they're not always just ready for people. Oh, I yeah. know. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever seen when I'm you're out on the ocean? <laughs> Have you ever been, I was going to ask, have have you ever been afraid when you're out on the ocean? Has anything ever happened that scared you? Maybe, um, I I, I can't imagine what it would be, but like, did you ever see like a giant uh, shark? It sounds horrible being out there. Yeah, you know, I mean. No, it doesn't. Captain Ahab. (laughs) (laughs) Captain Ahab, I was about to say, yeah, no giant squids as yet. (laughs) We did see a shark feeding frenzy once and Riley like shat himself. It was really funny. We were both free diving down and. He obviously speared a fish and a whole bunch of reef sharks came out and were just mauling this reef fish. Anyway, I was down at about, I don't want to go saying how it's me, I was down pretty deep. Riley, you know, and I was like, where's Riley? And I looked up and there's a shark feeding frenzy. Riley's gone. Anyway, he swam back to the boat and I was I pretty left the line of the dead. He left me with the freaking <laughs> oh, <Riley. shark. laughs> You should have shot her with the spear gun and pulled her back. It's I the know. gentlemanly thing to I do. Don't... I don't know if you've seen that episode of Seinfeld with George Costanza and someone needs to lead the way to safety. Yes, yes. <laughs> someone, someone has to get there first. 